doing today. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for clicking on my video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Alyssa. This is on Wednesdays We Talk Murder. Um, and we have a pretty short story today, but um, I think it's very interesting. So let's jump into it. So our case today is um, set in Japan. Sorry, I'm free. Head itches. Um, it's set in Japan. And um, so our perpetrator's name is Meiji Ishikawa. Um, she was born in Kim Kunitomi, Japan. Sorry, sorry. Listen, all these names are very Japanese, and I have listened to a lot of a lot of um, Google Translate, and I still can't do it. So don't judge me. But anyway, she was born um, in Kunitomi, and then she ended up going to. She ended up going to the University of Tokyo for school, and then she later graduated from there with um, a degree in health sciences. It didn't say exactly what it was, but she did go on to become a midwife, um, so I'm assuming that it was in a healthcare field. So she graduated from there. She was originally just a midwife at the Kabuki um, Maternity Hospital in Japan, but she later ended up becoming the director of the hospital. In her life, after she was the director of the hospital, um, she met her husband, whose name is Takashi Ishikawa, that's where she got her last name from. I'm not sure what her maiden name was, but that's just her married name. So it's now the 1940s, early 1940s, and um, like I said, Takashi and um, Maeve ended up getting married, and they tried to have children, but unfortunately Maeve couldn't have any. Um, and just a little bit of history on Japan at this time. So abortions were highly frowned upon. They were very illegal, very, very illegal. And um, anything to prevent or harm a pregnant woman before she had a baby was severely punished. And the punishment for having an abortion was more severe than the punishment for having a child and then later on that child dying from whatever reason, you inflicting it or whatever, which is just, I don't agree with it because I just feel like, um, I'm not even going to comment on it, but I just can't. In 1945, after Japan surrenders, um, during World War II, all of the soldiers start coming back and a lot of them are going back to their families, but a lot of them had to postpone their marriages to go um, and serve in the war. So when they're returning home, they're really just wanting to get life back to normal because they had atomic bombs dropped on them and then just like the economic and social um, stresses that war put on a country. So all the soldiers come back and they're just really anxious to get life back to normal. So what do you do when you come back from war and you want to get life back to normal? You know, because they do it everywhere. They have a baby boom. So from the years of night, and listen, when you hear baby boom, you're probably thinking about like boomers, baby boomers, you know, like in the America, in the United States. No, no. Let me tell you right now, because it was even more severe, not severe, but even more intense over there. Between 1947 and 1949, the average number of babies born per year, per year, not in total, per year, was 2.6 million babies being born every year for three years after the war ended. Are you serious? That's freaking... That's just wild to me. So now the war is over and it's the late 1940s um, and maybe he's still the director of this maternity hospital and she starts noticing that she has a dilemma. She keeps getting this influx of babies from parents who So it's late, it's the 1940s still, and Maggie is the director of this hospital, right? And she is having a big problem, right? She is having this influx of babies coming into her hospital from parents who are low income and can barely afford to feed themselves. So they're going to this hospital trying to get some help from her um, so that they can raise this baby. And Mayuki, her hospital wasn't getting the most funding either because you know it's post-war that's not really what's on everybody's mind to donate to so she's not getting money from the government she's not getting money from charity so she has to come up with a solution for herself she decided that she was going to deliver these children of these parents who couldn't afford to take care of them and in doing so 
once she had them, she would just place them in a different room and neglect them, um, and all of them died as a direct result of this neglect that she gave them. And after all of the midwives had left from the hospital, maybe decided that she needed to recruit some more help um, because she wasn't going to be able to do this by herself. So she decided that she was going to get her husband, Takashi Ishikawa, to help her. Um, and his job in this whole plot was to contact the families of the babies that they delivered and get money from them. And when he would talk to them on the phone, this is just like... If I laugh, it's not because it's funny, it's because it's ridiculous that they decided that they were entitled to this money from the families. So they were telling the families that, idiots, since they had the children, it would be cheaper for them to just give them money so that they would leave them alone than to raise a child themselves. Which is just like, you offered to do this for them, you told them that you would take care of it for them, and now you're saying, oh yeah, we want money, which is just freaking terrible people. And I don't really know how many families actually ended up paying the um, Ishikawas or what. It, there was no real information on that. So after she gets help from her husband, she decides she needs help from a doctor. And she gets help from one of the doctors that works at her hospital, her facility. And his name is Shiro Nakiyama. And his job in this whole plot was to forge the death certificates and make it to where the all babies died from natural causes and not from neglect as they did. I'm not sure how this information got to where it got to, but somehow the information that uh, Miyuki and Takashi, what they were doing to these babies got out to, I believe it was the local, um, like a hospital inspector, wrongful death, I don't know, something like that. So, um, somebody got in contact with the Shinjuku ward office who's in charge of this stuff, um, but nothing was ever done and they basically just ignored what the person had to come and told them, which is just like, you're complacent in these murders at that point, like if you know. So it's now January of 1948 and two police officers from the Oshido Police Department accidentally stumble upon um, five victims from the Macy's neglect. And they go and get autopsies done on these bodies and it comes back a couple days later that all five of the bodies that were found, none of them had died from natural causes. And three days later, after these bodies were found, Mayuki and Takashi were arrested. So on January 15th of 1948, they were finally arrested. And this is where it gets like really, really sort of dark and sad. Mayuki, when she was arrested and questioned by police, she said that all of the victims were unwanted babies and she said basically that she wasn't responsible for their death, it was their parents' fault. And which is just freaking terrible. So maybe he's blaming the parents basically for abandoning these babies and inevitably causing their deaths. And the public is actually on Mayuki's side on this, which is just like I I get it, but at the same time, yes and no, they were doing what they thought was best for them and possibly their child. I don't know if they knew that that's what she was going to do to them, but still so messed up. Um, so the public was on her side with this, but there was a reporter named Yuriko Mai Mayamoto, and he said that it wasn't the parents' fault at all, that this was just a case of discrimination from AP against these low-income families, which... It is, you know, like they were put into her care and they trusted her and then she neglected their children. So yes, it, in my opinion, that's what I feel. I feel like it's discrimination. Um, but the police keep investigating on this case. So the police end up finding um, 40 bodies 
in a mortician's house and then a couple days after that they ended up finding more i think it was about 30 to 50 bodies underneath the temple but the amount of victims the amount of Mayuki's victims is still really unknown because when they were uncovering all these bodies there was just so many that they sort of lost track found the five in the hospital so that's five and then they added the 40 from um, the mortician's office and then they added another 30 to 50 from the temple so now we're at a hundred or roughly like 75 bodies 75 victims of Mayuki that they have found today it's still unknown how many victims Mayuki actually had so the authorities end up viewing Mayuki's crimes as crimes of omission which just in my opinion they're not crimes of omission they are straight out crimes she neglected hundreds of children and from that they died so yes that is not a crime of omission she knew what she was doing um, and I disagree with that. But anyways, the Tokyo District Court ended up sentencing her to eight years in prison. Um, and Takashi, her husband, got four years in prison for his role in the murders, as well as um, Dr. Shiro, he received four years as well, um, which is already infuriating. So in 1952, the three of them all did appeals on their convictions and their sentences, and they ended up getting them cut in half so yes half I don't know I just want to talk to whoever was in charge of this appeal because why again why but so yes Minky ended up only serving four years in prison for her hundred at least 75 to 100 plus murders Takashi ended up serving too, and so did Dr. Shiro. Another reason why I wanted to talk about this is it sort of has a good ending. Um, not really happy, but there is some good that comes out of it. So, Miyuki's case was really like a landmark case in Japanese history. Um, the Japanese government, after this case, started to consider abortions for economic reason. And the main reason why it was thought that all of this happened was because of the influx of babies coming into her hospital and just the baby boom in Japan in general and at that time most of the babies were unwanted or um, the families that they were coming from just couldn't afford to care for them. July 13th of 1948 the eugenic protection law which is now called the mother's body protection law um, and the national examination system for midwives was put into place um, and then on June 24th of 1994 no, sorry, on June 24th of 1949, um, abortion was finally legalized for economic reasons in Japan. Basically, what this did for the people of Japan was if you were living in Japan at this time, I'm not sure if this is still the current law or not, but if you're living in Japan and you fall pregnant and you cannot afford to care for the baby because of your economic situation, you're just having financial struggles, anything like that, you can go and get an abortion so that you don't have to suffer and that child doesn't have to suffer or grow up in a family where it will not have its basic needs because you can't even afford the needs for yourself um and i just want to point out if you're going to say anything bad about abortion please don't i will delete your comment abortion is health care this is not this video is not supposed to be about the debate about abortion this is a video for educational purposes history you know what i mean stuff like that but I just wanted to do this case because I felt like abortion is healthcare. It's not a feeling, it's a fact. Abortion is healthcare, and women should have access to safe abortions if they need it, regardless of the reason. Um, but yes, that is my opinion. You can have your opinion. If you comment something derogatory beneath, I will delete it. So, just a fair warning. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching this video as well. Sorry, I got a little bitchy, but thank you for watching this video all the way through. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, I have no idea. I usually have the topic that I'm already going to do for the next week already written out and everything, but I have no idea what I'm going to do next week. So if you have any cases, suggestions, anything like that you want me to cover, please let me know. I just want to let you guys know there's a lot of cases in the media right now that I wanted to um, like the Ronnie O'Neill case, and then I just saw one the other day, I think her name's Lauren Johnson, um, 
but I want to do those but I need to wait until the cases fully play out because it is almost impossible to find background information on people like this while the case is still going on but also another reason why I don't want to do that is because I don't want to present facts that I might think are correct but are actually not the final product you know what I mean because things can change and I don't want to give you guys lies um but please comment any suggestions that you have anything else that you'd like to see me do let me know if you love it hate my look um it took me forever but thank you so much for watching if you liked it enjoyed it please like comment and subscribe I really appreciate it share with your friends hope you all have a great day remember see something say something Bye.